So, first of all, hello everybody. It's nice for you to be able to join us today. Um, I know that all, lots of us live very busy lives, um, so it's nice to be able to take some time out, just spend some time with us today, um, and introduce ourselves and say hello to year one. Um, I know it's probably quite a strange time for you guys, um, as your children are going, leaving reception and going into year one with some brand new teachers. Although, Miss Piercy, I know that you're coming with us from reception into year one, so you'll be able to take some of your lovely children. No. With you. <laughs> <laughs> which would be a very nice treat, won't it? So, I know, I'm so lucky. <laughs> you are. So I'm Mr. Heeson, so um, some of you probably see me around school, and I think I've taught some of your um, brothers and sisters as well in year two, so I spent quite a bit, bit of time now in year two, and it's been a few years since I've been in year one. Um, so I'll be the lead teacher in year one this year, so if there's any problems or anything you'd like to discuss at all, um, you can always get in touch with myself. Um, do you want to introduce yourself, Miss Piercy? Yeah, so obviously I'm Miss Percy. I, I know lots of you already, and we've, it's so strange that this time last year we were on a Zoom doing the same thing but talking about reception. So I do know most of you. Um, and I'll be moving up to year one in September, and I can't wait. <laughs> and Miss Courtney Hale? Oh, Mrs Courtney Hale, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mrs Courtney Hale. Um, I joined the school in January, a um, bit of a weird time with it just about to go into lockdown. Um, and I'm obviously in year one at the moment, so I'm staying in year one and being part of the team, which I'm looking forward to. Um, I, have, I have met some of the children, but I'm looking forward to getting them, uh, getting to know them more. I think we've got a really lovely team this year, haven't we, as well? We've got somebody from year two, somebody from reception and somebody in year one at the moment. So hopefully we'll have a really good understanding of where the children have come from, where they're going to be and where we're going next as well. So I think that'll be a really nice team for us. Um, oh, why won't it let me move screen? Hang on a second. Oh, there we go. Very good. Um, right then. So life in year one. Um, obviously at the moment, I know things are a bit strange. Um, things aren't quite how we expected they would be at this time of the year with COVID restrictions in place at the moment still. Um, and obviously going into year one next year, depending on what the government um, expects of us um, and what uh, restrictions are in place, obviously COVID, um, oh, sorry, so I'm just waiting to join. Um, ensuring that we are COVID safe will obviously be another one priority for the children and ourselves as well to make sure that we are adhering to all the restrictions we have and that those hygiene expectations are maintained as well. I think it's been something that's been really good for all of us as well is having that extra awareness of the hygiene um, as well and making sure that we are being as clean as we possibly can be. Um, but obviously for us guys as well, it's ever so important to make sure that we are giving a really big priority to our children's mental well-being and their happiness and their safety. That is paramount for us. That comes before anything else. You know, we want our children in, in year one to enjoy themselves and to be happy joining us as well in school and make sure they feel safe and nurtured um, and loved by all of our team. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to add from the year one team? Sorry. Um, I, I was just going to say it's, it's a good thing to just go over hand washing with your child before they come back to school in September, just um, so that they're really it's kind of really refreshed in their minds. I think this is it. The more we revisit it, the hopefully the more ingrained it will be and it will hopefully stay with us for a long time now as well, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, Miss Pissy, do you want to start for us? Can you hear me, Miss Percy? So, so, sorry, my, my internet keeps breaking up. <laughs> um, so, of course, we're moving from reception up to year one, and although some parts of that transition will look a little bit more formal, we will go with the needs of the children. So, um, at the minute, year one doesn't look as formal as it used to. There is still continuous provision, we call it, so it's when the children will go in choose their activities around the classroom and we will continue to do that particularly in September so that it isn't straight from this is reception and this is year one and they're very different we want them that we want there to be a um, smooth transition into that and at the moment year one even at this time of the year at, at the end of the year are still using continuous provision because that's what that's what the children need and um, so we will start to use a different curriculum so this time last year and all, all this year we've talked about the earliest curriculum but the national curriculum looks very different instead of having the um, like communication and language it's the english curriculum or the maths curriculum geography and history instead of understanding the world but we'll go into more detail 
on that as the year progresses because it's a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah. um, but we will continue to encourage independence and self-regulation, you know, making sure that the children can go and get the resources that they need to do to do the job that they're that they're doing and that self-regulation and making sure that they're feeling happy and comfortable in their classroom environment um, and we've got experiences planned for the children for next year <laughs> whether they will go ahead or not and um, we will have to wait and see but again we'll talk about that in more detail in a moment and all of the year one classrooms have access to the outdoors so you know it's really important for their mental health and well-being and engagement as well when children go outside they're so much more willing to learn and they take so much more on board as well and we will be having our forest school sessions we don't know which day they will be on yet but when we do we will we'll let you know um but yeah i'm so excited to be going to forest school getting getting very muddy i, I see mr heeson and mrs courtney hale coming in there in their uh, clothes ready to go outside and i can't i can't wait to join that and the children i know the children will absolutely love that as well when we go to forest school at the minute it's all around stories and um, vocabulary and language but it looks a little bit different in year one so that will be that will be something the children will get a lot from mrs courtney Hale, i don't know if there's anything else you can add about school. yeah just wondering mrs courtney Hale, is there anything you want to add about forest yeah. school and the transition um not really i just know that the the children absolutely love forest school and the muddier they get the better really um so yeah do make sure that you send children to school in not their best clothes or their uniform um because they do get a little bit muddy <laughs> to say a, a the least it, a lot of it <laughs> a lot a lot muddy yeah. the muddier the better you're absolutely right and, and a change of footwear <laughs> is so essential as well because they literally they come back from forest school and they come into the classroom and i'm like no take your boots off or take your trainers off because there's no way you can wear them in the classroom once they've been out to forest school they need to literally be put in a bag ready to go home Absolutely. And it is one of those things with forest schools as well, that we will do it in any weather. Apart from it being ever so windy or ever so stormy, um, we will be doing it any weather. So if it's raining, we will embrace it and we will love it all the more for it as well. <laughs> OK, so I'll pop on to the next slide for us then. Um, do you want to start on these ones, Mrs Courtney Hale? Um, yeah, OK. So um, these are some of the topics that we're going to be covering next year. And um, it's really nice to to have a topic to lead our learning for the term. Um, and this is something the children are already familiar with from reception. Um, and the first topic that we're going to look at is who am I, which is a topic that I think you've, you've covered in a certain way in reception, didn't you, um, Miss Piercy? But we're actually doing it in a different way, but it's, it'll be something they're familiar with and be able to build on, which we think will be really good for year one. Um, we've also got uh, Would a Tiger Come for Tea in Derby? And we've looked at this text, The Tiger Who Came to Tea, this year in year one, and the children absolutely loved it. So a lot of our work, not just English, but a lot of our work, like the art and the music um, and geography, they are all, it will all come round uh, this topic, Would a Tiger Come to Tea? So, um, yeah, the, this these sort of topic-led um, learning um, inspires the children and it also helps with the continuous provision in class which Miss Piercy mentioned uh, before um, because we can have things out that the children are familiar with and have been taught and then they can carry on that learning um, through a little bit of choice um, when they've got time to choose in the classroom. Um, do you want to carry on with some of the others? Um, Mr. Heeson. Of course, yeah. So this one's one of my favourite ones here is what's the toys story? Um, we had lots of fun thinking of these names, by the way, as well, for the titles. Um, so this, I think this topic here would be really interesting. It's going to be one of our history topics and think about how toys have changed over time as well. So thinking about what our lives have been like, how our lives have changed over, you know, our short lifetime. And um, think about our parents and our grandparents, and how things have changed and kind of looking through that um, from a toy perspective as well and seeing how those differences have happened. Um, and like Miss Courtney Hale said as well, you know, we really want to take that cross-curricular approach to our topics this, um, this over next year and think about how can we incorporate all of those subjects, like Miss Piercy said, those key national curriculum subjects together and bring it into a really lovely experience for the children as well. So hopefully without spoiling it too much, um, we are anticipating that we might be able to make some of our very own toys in design and technology as well. So I'm very much looking forward to that. 
Um, then one of the next topic uh, we might be looking at, well, we'll be looking at um, is who started the Great Fire of London, um, which I think as well will be a lovely opportunity to explore the past a little bit more um, and see some famous people and how they've changed our lives now as well. Um, and finally is what's growing in the garden, um, which I think as well will be a really nice topic. We're hoping to get our own little allotment in school um, as much as we can and try and grow some of our own fruits and vegetables um, as well for the children to experience. Um, and br again, bringing all of those curriculum areas together for a really lovely experience. Um, so, on to the next slide. Over to you, Miss Percy. So, <laughs> so as you know, reading is um, is huge in our school. We really want the children to succeed with their re reading and enjoy reading and be successful. And we, you've seen how it works in reception, and it, it's it's quite similar going up into year one. They'll still have their reading book to take home, and then a reading diary um, and you know we've we've encouraged you this year to read at home as much as possible and we always say that a short snappy five ten minutes of reading every day is much better than one hour or 20 minutes two or three times a week and um, just a really short session as frequent as possible would is just perfect that's that's all you need to be be doing at home um, so the reading books that they take home, just like they are in reception, they'll be closely matched to the sounds that they've been learning in school. So the phonics that we do in year one will obviously continue as it has in reception and those books will match the sounds that we're doing. Um, and as you're reading with your child, you know, just asking questions about what's happening in the story, who are the characters, can they, can they make a prediction, how is the story going to end? And we will also have a second book to take home from the library. So they will have those books to choose and use at home too. But you, all our parents know how how much we we read in this school and how much we um, encourage the love of reading too. So again, it will it will continue as it has done this year in reception. And that, and you know, as well, I think it's really important for you guys to be able to share stories with the children as well. You know, make sure that if you know if you get the opportunity to read some really um, traditional stories, some familiar stories to the children, it will really build up their language um, and their familiarity with what stories look like as well. So you know, don't don't worry too much about if you want to spend that time that evening reading to your child and sharing that experience together. You know, that will just help the children absolutely love um, stories and just allow them to be saturated in it as well. So on the next one then, so phonics. Um, so in school, uh, we do use a phonics first approach to reading. So that means that we teach our children right from the early ages, um, the association between the graphemes, which are the letters, and the phonemes, which are the sounds. So we have, we have um, by using the fresh phonics scheme that we have, we have lots, you've probably seen them before in all of our videos that we've been uploading. Um, we have our um, sound cards that we have that have a little rhyme and then actually go along with the graphemes and the letters as well. So our children, again, in reception, have been building upon that really strongly this year and that will continue again into year one as well and they'll continue building up that bank and that um, of that repertoire of lots of different sounds as well um, and what happens in year one is we have um, a government um, prescribed um, phonic screening check which will take place in June 2022 which feels weird saying 2022 it feels very far away but I don't think it is as far as you think um, so in this one I've just put a little picture here to show you what sort of things the children will have in this phonic screening check now it's nothing to worry about it's just an opportunity for us to check and see what progress the children have made what you know what 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 can they do where are they at in their phonics learning at the moment so there's a mixture in here of having real words so if you can see on the left hand side of the picture these are real words that the children will be able to read and um, they can use their phonics to sound it out or some of them might be at this point be able to read some of them by sight as well um, and also to test the children's phonics knowledge and um, there are some aliens words as well so these are pseudo words so they're not real words but what it means we say to our children that if we're a good reader we can read any word whether it's real or not if we know it or we don't know it we can still use our phonics to decode it and to find out what that word is so they do have some very lovely pictures of aliens alongside it which the children do love seeing um, and the children will be able to use their phonics to sound that out as well and they'll be able to read those words so throughout the year we'll be sending lots of things home through targets or through um, little bits of papers or anything just to keep you in the loop with what's going on and to give you guys have a practice at home with the children as well um, and we will be uploading regularly on dojo our um, what sound we're learning that week so that you guys again can be kept in the loop with what's going on at school um, 
we will be having a phonics workshop that will be taking place very soon. So that will probably take place in um, September, I would imagine. Uh, date to be confirmed with that one. Um, so in this uh, during this time, it will be opportunity again just to you know familiarise ourselves with it, to reconnect with phonics and what that looks like in practice. And again, just if there's any ways that you can support at home with your child's learning um, with that. And of course, we have got our very successful YouTube channel now after all of our home learning. So if you did want to get a head start or to revisit anything from reception as well, there are lots of videos on there that you guys can go back to and have a look at and um, you know be able to familiarize yourself with those sounds as well and the ways that we teach them. Um, so over to you Mrs Courtney Hale. I don't think we will have ever had. Oh sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry Miss Percy. Go on. I was just saying I don't think we will have ever had a group of parents that know so much about phonics because they've seen they've seen it all with all of our videos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of budding teachers in this uh, in this year group with their home learning. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's, That's okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as Mr. Heeson's already said, we are a, a phonics first approach school, but oh, sorry. it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but something that we've started to do, which we have felt has helped the children, is um, introduce um, action words. Um, children have to learn common exception words alongside their phonics and a lot, a lot of the time those common exception words are really tricky to actually sound out using their phonic knowledge, um, especially as um, at the start of year one, uh, they are limited on uh, the graphemes and the different sounds those graphemes can make, the alternative graphemes uh, and the phonemes that they make. Um, so learning some of these words by sight is really useful because it helps with the children's fluency in reading. Um, by the end of year one, things like go and know that you can see there, um, would they'd know through their phonics because we would do a letter O making the long O sound. Um, in words like go and know, but at the beginning, they wouldn't necessarily know that. So to know it by sight is really useful. Um, and these action words are really good, especially for those children that don't necessarily, um, are not necessarily sight learners. So they have an action to go with them. Um, so like with no, you'd waggle your finger um, and also the picture as well. So they've got three things to sort of help them in learning these sight words. Um, and what we found is that the, the children are becoming a lot more fluent. So instead of having to then kind of try and sound out words like no, they just know them instantly. And it means that when they do stop and sound slightly longer words, they're not losing the flow of the story or whatever they're reading. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll be using these um, during um, year one and you might see these being sent home at times for the children to learn. So thank you. Okay, so should we take it in turns with these ones then? Do you want to start us off, Miss Percy? Yeah, so ways to help at home. Um, there are a few things that would be a really solid building block for year one, and men, most of them can do these already because we've been working on them in reception. Um, so reading and writing their own name so that you know they can go and find their coat peg and write their name on their work and things like that and practice informing all their numbers and letters correctly so we, i know a lot of my targets that i've sent home this year have been where to start a letter and where to end it and making sure they're on the line so for a d it would be around the dinosaur's bottom up his tall neck and down to his feet so we, you know, we can send things like that home to you so you know all of the rhymes as well. And because it's really important that the children's handwriting starts and ends in the right place, ready for year one. And, sit, and we're trying to get them to sit on the line at the minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're working on it. Yeah. Um, and I think that having those and then counting forwards and backwards. Sorry. Yeah. So as you can say, having those foundations as well, those solid foundations where they can follow okay. quickly, <laughs> right from reception into year one, will really support them as they go. Um, as they go into year two and beyond as well, it will help with their flu with their uh, fluidity of their writing. They'll be able to write much quicker and easier as well. It'll take away that strain away from them as well, um, if they're forming their letters correctly at that point. 
sorry, Miss Percy, I just jumped in. Yeah. It, it also helps with them um, later on, because if they don't form their letters correctly now, when they have to come and join letters later on, if they've been starting in the wrong place, then they won't ever be able to form letters in a join script that will be able to be read by other people. So there is a reasoning behind starting where they need to start, because um, sometimes children think, well, I, I can form the letter, it looks, it looks like it should do, but if they've not started in the right place, then it will uh, hinder them later on when they have to um, start looking at joining letters. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. We find that in year two as well. Um, so yeah, having those foundations will really help um, the children out. Um, so on to the next one then. So counting forwards and backwards to 20. Obviously, like you say, Miss Percy, I think this is something that you guys have been working on a lot in reception as well. Um, and again, just really um, you know, consolidating that learning for children as well, making sure they can understand it by counting in rope. But also, what does that mean? What does 10 look like? What does five look like? What does that mean to me? Understanding that value of the number. Um, and also, this is one of Miss Pierce's additions. She said how important it was to make sure that we were being able to start at any number within tw within 20 as well. So you might start counting from five onwards to 20. You might start counting from as you know, eight to 13. You know, can they pick up that? Do they understand uh, where that number fits within the sequence as well? Um, and as part of that, recognizing the numbers, do they understand what 13 looks like? Do they understand what four looks like? And again, do they understand that association between the value and the representation of it as well? Um, yeah, quite... we'll be doing a lot of work, won't we, with apparatus to look at the place value of number, and I'm sure they they started doing that in um, reception. We'll be carrying it on because if they don't know the value of a number, then really, at, like adding and subtracting numbers doesn't really mean too much to them, and we want them to really understand it. It's the understanding that's that's so important. Do you want me to carry on with? Yeah, just carry on. Next one, yeah. Um, We've already mentioned about reading daily um, or as much as possible um, and that we, we've said how important that is and if there's one thing that you do, the reading daily or reading often is probably the most important because if a child can read, they can access the whole curriculum. So it's not just about reading, it's about being able to access every subject within the curriculum. Um, also, I think if, if your child can read or is a, a really keen reader, they, it often follows into their writing. So often you see children that are good readers are also good writers because they've got the, the rich language and, and um, the story structure um, in their writing. Um, also phonics, um, we, Mr. Heeson said we'll be updating you with the sounds that the children are learning. So just kind of being aware of that and being able to point to out the sounds that they're learning um, from that week in school and being able to see it in their reading books. Or if you're reading a story and you suddenly sort of see that um, graphing that they've been learning that week, being just making them more aware of things is, is really good. Um, do you want me to just talk about spellings? Have you done this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in year one, um, the children will have some spellings to learn, and these will focus on the phonics that have been taught in school that week. So if it was, let's just say, the um, A, A grapheme, A-Y, um, all the words would have that A-Y grapheme in them. Um, and then we often have a um, common exception word as well um, for them to learn, uh, which, will, which will help with their um, with their spelling and their writing um, on a on a day to day basis. Do you want to finish us off, Miss Percy? The targets. Yeah. So the targets will be sent home fortnightly. And um, this year in reception, we have tried to send them home fortnightly as well, and they're in our purple target box. I'm not sure in year one if we we have if we're having target box, so it, they might look a little bit different, but they will be sent home every fortnight night for you to work on and it will be individualized so every child will have something slightly different and um, because we're going with the needs of exactly what it is that we want your child to work on and um, so they are they're very personal to your child and when they when they are worked on at home they do make a huge difference so if you can work on these then please do sometimes they're not academic as well sometimes it might be um that we've noticed that they perhaps need some um, help with cutting skills. 
So it might be just to, to use scissors at home and, and cut out squares or shapes um, just to, to get used to doing that. Um, or, or it, it could be something um, like with in term, personal development, like doing your coat up, doing your zip yeah. up or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Okay, and last of all then, just before we go to questions, um, just a quick note about PE days. So um, we intend that our PE will look similar to how it looks at the moment as well. So the children will be able to come um, into school in their PE kit. So that will be their usual school polo that they have. So that could be a red one, um, usually. I think it is, isn't it? We don't have, do we have white ones anymore? I'm trying to think. Red ones, isn't it? White. Right, right, yeah, just white. Um, <laughs> it's been a while, I've been off for a week. <laughs> um, and um, they should have their black joggers or blue joggers as well, <laughs> or shorts, depending on the weather outside as well, um, alongside trainers. Um, and we found this to help the children be much more ready for PE as well, take away that change in time. It's allowed us a lot more time actually doing PE um, and getting them fit and getting us healthy and getting having some fun with it as well. Um, and we will try and teach the children outside as much as possible as well. So please do make sure that they have got appropriate clothes for the weather um, in that sense as well. Um, and we will confirm the PE day with you as soon as we know. Um, I think at the moment it's Tuesday and year you know, one, but I don't want to commit to anything yet until it's on black and white, um, and then we'll let you know as soon as we can as well. Okay, so last of all then, time for any questions. So I'll stop the share and I will bring everybody up. So has anybody got any questions they'd like to ask at all? And if, was, if you want to unmute yourself. Um, And what about school dinners? Is that still as it is in reception? Um, do you want to take that one, Miss Piercy? Yeah, so the children will go to the dining hall as usual. At the moment, the year ones are eating their dinner in our PE hall or assembly hall, but it will very much be the same um, just a little bit later on. Is it 12 o'clock? The year ones go down for yeah, their they dinner do, yeah. instead of quarter to 12. Yeah. But, okay. yeah. but not much difference at all with lunchtime. Yeah. And I, so again, do we still have to commit to whether it's dinners or packed lunches? Like, so they know for obviously wastage and all of that. Yeah. That's a yes, yeah, if, if, that'd be great, thank you. And um, I think as well, depending on where we go, it would depend on what the COVID restrictions are at the time as well. So we might all go back into the hall again, um, as we used to do, or we might still be having it in the hall within school as well. So I think those things will be TBC. Just on a note with um, lunches, do, do we pay for school lunches when they're over five? Does that change? Um, so up until seven years old, the children are entitled to, to, to meals, to free meals with that one as well. So if you want to have those, that's absolutely fine. Um, and they are still free. Thank you. No worries. Okay, um, so we'll wrap it up just there then. Um, no, just another question, sorry. No, no it's fine. Um, we'll, we'll start times, um, I assume that for like TBC as well start times and finish times all change and, and stuff as well. Yeah, I, I think we're still looking to have, um, at the moment, obviously this could change, and um, I think we're looking to have staggered start times still um, at the moment, just depending on how things go. Um, but we will communicate that with you as soon as possible. I think it might be a little bit later than what you are starting at the moment. Um, obviously that's what's happening at the moment is year one children will start a little bit later and finish a little bit later. Um, but yeah, we, we'll definitely communicate that with you as soon as we can. And with regard to um, like transition, although we haven't had like opportunities to like meet you guys in person, have have the kids had opportunity to sort of like, because uh, I know they're obviously in their bubbles again now, have they had opportunities to kind of like see their new classmates and new teachers and stuff like that still? Um, Miss Pierce, I think, you, did you do some work um, in reception before? Yeah, so all of reception. Yeah, we had, um, we've been having mornings where the children have been going into their new groups and doing some rotations around our classrooms. And also all of the reception children go outside together every day. So at the moment they spend at least an hour or so together on our outside area. And we've made them aware of who, who's going to be in their new class. So we've been, although it's difficult because obviously we can't go up to our new classroom together, we've been trying to do as much as we can in reception within our bubble. 
involved to get to know our, get to know our new classrooms and new um, classmates as well. And I know Mr. Heeson and Mrs. Courtney Hill have tried to pop in where they can, but again, it's so hard with the bubble mixing. It's often away from a doorway. But, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, we have we have we have tried. Yeah, um, I think yeah, at the moment, and that will continue up until the end of summer. So we'll carry on. Sorry, we'll carry on with our rotation mornings in our new classes up until summer. Thank you. Um, and I think as well we're transitioning, we're, we're currently on pause at the moment just with transition events, obviously with how things are at the moment in school, um, but I, I, I hope that we'll be able to do some sort, sort of transition um, as much as possible, you know, in a socially distant sense as well. So again, there will be to, to be confirmed. The intention was that we would have the move up day um, on the 6th of July, but I think uh, we need to look at that again and just reevaluate and think exactly what that's going to look like um, for our children at the moment. But, you know, Miss, Mrs Courtney Hale and I, you know, we, we want to show our faces as much as we can, don't we, as well, so we can, you know, say hello to the children. Um, and also also, we'll be uploading videos onto the dojo as soon as we can as well. So when we get our new class dojo, we'll put some videos on of us in the new classroom, introducing ourselves and just, you know, giving that, the children the opportunity to just feel a bit more at ease about things, know what's coming a little bit more as well. And are there, no worries. Are there any more questions at all? No? Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. Um, if you do decide to you know, think of any other questions you have later on, uh, please do get in touch with um, any of us. And we're more than happy to help either through Dojo or whatever it might be. Um, so yes, thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you all very soon. See you all later.